It's Sea Beneath and Ico and Igor's 10th anniversary. Since we launched our pilot episode and became a nonprofit in 2012, we've accomplished a lot. Over the past 10 years, over 12,000 people have installed the Ico and Igor app, and our videos have tallied over 350,000 minutes watched on YouTube and Highbrow. Check out this video to see how our content has evolved over time. Time to play, time to explore with Ico and Igor. La, 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 let's go! Hi, my name is Aiko. I'm a purple whale. This is my best friend, Igor. Hi, everybody. I'm Igor. I'm a blowfish. Hey, guys. I'm Aiko. Hi, I'm Igor. Come play. Hey there, friends. I'm Igor. And I'm Aiko. And today, we're going to talk to you about emotions. Take the bread and then you toast it up. Toast it up. Toast it up. Then you take the jam and spread it on the bread. Spread it on the bread. Spread it on the bread. And then you take the bread and put one on the other. Put one on the other. Put one on the other. Now we just made a dino jam sand. We just made a dino jam sand. Which, yeah! I feel like crying. I have a lump in my throat and my chest feels very heavy. I mostly just feel like someone has taken all the colors away. I'm so sorry you feel that way, Aiko. And thank you for sharing that with us. When looking for clues for how we're feeling, we can become detectives and go through our detective steps. One, put on our detective hats. Two, listen to our bodies. Three, check out our thoughts. Four, review our memories. It's also helpful to talk through how you're feeling with friends and family. My name is Chrissy McNair, and I'm the mother of three amazing young men, one of whom was diagnosed with autism at the age of two. I want to wish a heartfelt congratulations to C. Beneath and Iko and Igor on celebrating 10 years of supporting families with autism. And as we take a moment to celebrate them, I also want to encourage us to celebrate you, the caregiver. Parents, siblings, family members, and friends who have given their all so that we can support our family members with autism. We have so much to celebrate in our loved ones with autism. Each is so unique and brings us joy. But how often do we pause and take a moment to celebrate ourselves, to celebrate all that we do, and to really think about our needs and what can make our lives more fulfilling? You know, November is National Family Caregivers Month. And I just wanted to urge all of our caregivers to take some time to think about their own needs. Have you been doing so much for others that you have lost some connection with your own hobbies or interests? See if you can find one thing during the month of November that will bring you joy that is just for you. And I know that's easier said than done. I remember a time when I couldn't even 
think of what my hobby would be if I had time to have a hobby. Um, and I, you know, decided to kind of think about what was it that I loved doing when I was a child. And for me, it was sports and dance and art. And so at that time, I really didn't have time to be on a sports team, nor, you know, did I really think that was something that I could pull off physically, but I could coach my son's basketball team. And with dance, you know, we didn't have um, the funds really to be in a regular dance class, but I went to my Parks and Rec uh, program in the city where I lived and I offered to teach adult hip hop classes. And let me tell you, that was a lot of fun. It connected me with those things that brought me joy when I was younger. And even though I had to do it all on a smaller scale, that was where I was at the time and it worked. So, you know, when you take time to connect with your own passions and the things that make you feel more fulfilled, you can really start to be more open and feel more alive. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me to talk with you at Stephen Eats. My name is Aubin Stamer. I am a psychologist and a faculty member at the University of California Davis Mind Institute, where we do research and clinical services for people with neurodevelopmental disabilities. I have been working in the field of autism and neurodevelopmental disabilities for about 30 years now. I started my work at UC San Diego with Dr. Laura Scheidman, where I learned about parent coaching and working with children and families um, in the home and in the school setting and learning naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions, which are now really considered best practice for many children. And so I was in San Diego at UC San Diego and at Children's Hospital there, uh, working in inclusion of children with autism in preschool and toddler programs and doing research about autism services in schools and how we can better help teachers and leaders in school programs use evidence-based interventions effectively. I think the thing that families ask me the most is what's my child going to be like in the future? And what I often think about is how we really don't know what any of our kids are going to be like in the future, whether they have autism or don't have autism. We just have an idea in our mind about where we think our kids are going to go and how we think they're going to be. And it's, it's, a, it's a fallacy, I guess, or it's not really true to think that if they don't have neurodiverse minds that we know how they're going to be. We just don't. And so if we can embrace the idea that this little human is uh, developing in their own way and that we really can't predict where they're going to be, we can have some hints based on how they're doing at different times in their life. Um, but if we can really think about they're, they're going to be as amazing as they can be and really embrace the the child and the person that they are with all of their neurodiversity, it is really, I think, a wonderful release. Not to think that we have to make kids a certain way um, or to have pressure to be a certain way. And I'm hoping our world is going in that direction, being more accepting of differences and diversity in all kinds of ways, including neurodiversity so that uh, kids who think differently and express themselves differently can feel accepted. And hopefully learning about social emotional feelings and how to identify those and express those will be one step in that direction. So thank you. You can help us build off our first decade of success, propel us to even greater heights, and expand our impact through our 10th anniversary campaign at emotions.raisley.com.